In this video I've got a bit of a problem with my truck so it's a bit of a journey to fix it but I'm hoping that some of this content will actually help people who run into the same issue. We're actually traveling back into the past in this video because I'm at the end of it and I realize I filmed all sorts of stuff but I haven't actually explained what happened. So yeah I was going into town on Thursday and had no handbrake truck just rolled <laughs> luckily as i drove into town i thought about it and i thought well it's got to be in the handle at the front because the pressure was coming up on the back axle and actually releasing the brakes because in this truck if you haven't got any air you don't move the brakes are locked on <laughs> so i knew that end was working there was something further up so i'd hoped the valve was just stuck and sprayed some CRC in it and tapped it because it has got stuck before and stuck open actually and dra kept draining the air and I managed to sort that out but no nothing was working so I posted on Facebook and and then yeah it evolved from there it wasn't a big deal not having one because I drove into town and just parked it in gear and turned it off on the level hardest part was the gate actually <laughs> <laughs> because I had to the gates on a slope so I had to stop turn it off put it in gear open the gate start the truck drive through <laughs> do the same thing and it, it wasn't a big deal but fact remains I wouldn't get a COE like that I know that and yeah a handbrake is actually quite handy that's a useful item to have as you notice when you don't have one so anyway with the plastic thing yeah when when Gary and Pam turned up which was awesome I'm so grateful to them thought maybe gluing it together would help as a temporary measure only problem was it didn't hold because of the amount of pressure in it and then after that the seals started leaking so I couldn't actually get the air up to move and I was very lucky that they weren't going to leave me in the lurch <laughs> because otherwise I would have been stranded you know so yeah but that's how it all started I was heading into town to do my groceries which I actually did an atrocious job of and I still need to go into town again because I forgot stuff because my head was in the handbrake land of what's going wrong with it what can I do how do I sort it out so I forgot to get a few things but that's okay no biggie I can go and do that now so it's not a problem um oh actually if I want to do that now I've got to go the other way don't I that bloody road will be closed um hmm. the head of the road here where it meets the main road is going to be closed from today until the 21st so I must remember that and go the back road into town if I need to go into town Right, so here's the bits left from my pump. Gary cut that off to make a mount for my new for my new um, handbrake handle. And these are all parts. But anyway, this is the bit that breaks in them. Wayne Dyer said to me is a plastic bit that breaks. This looks a bit munted because we've tried to glue it back together and it didn't work. Um, but normally it doesn't look that rough. But this breaks and there's another big spring that goes on here but I thought Gary might as well use that for something he'll probably have a use for it but um, this is the bit that breaks and it's really the amount of pressure this part is under in there is phenomenal with two big springs so why they made it out of plastic is ridiculous but anyway what happened was um, we tried to glue it together, Gary tried epoxy, we tried <laughs> soldering to melt the plastic and all sorts of stuff and then we were just going to put it back together, or he was, and I'd try and find one but what happened in the meantime is these weird plastic seals weren't happy anymore once we put it all back together um, and it stopped sealing so I couldn't get my air up <laughs> I just didn't have enough air pressure to go anywhere 
so that was like oh crap so the seals weren't working properly so then it was like go to a plan b and i asked them i said you know what would you do um, i don't have much faith in these all the ones out there still available are going to be 40 or 50 year old plastic so yeah he reckon replace it with something else so we went to town we drove into hamilton and their bus which was awesome it was neat to go for a ride in it i really really loved it um and found a um it's a it's for an iveco but it's made in germany by nor brim nor i think the company's called and one of the TRT in Hamilton had one. It wasn't cheap, it was about 450 all up with GST. But it's brand new and look, I could have bought a second hand one of Trade Me that I wasn't sure even worked out of a cab and paid 200 bucks for it and it could have broken and done this next week. Because from what I gather from Wayne Dyer, uh, not Wayne Dyer, God, what am I talking about? <laughs> Wayne Cryer, <laughs> Lance Cryer's son, is that they can't get them because these things do this all the time. It's a real problem with them. They break, the plastic bit in them breaks. That's what he told me when I rang him. And it's really hard to find them. I did find a pump in the UK that had been re-kitted, so obviously they can maybe still find some parts. And that was $550 plus a retainer so that I would send them my old handbrake and they could, you know, re -kit that one, plus postage from the UK and God knows how long that would take. So to me that wasn't an ideal option either. So, yeah, it took a bit of doing because the um, new one has different ports and it had an extra one. So luckily Gary knows all about hydraulics and he fiddled around with it and figured out which did what and how to make it work and it works really really well I really love it but the thing he's told me to tell you if you pull one of these apart this goes like that right and the handle goes in there so it comes out of there so what he said to do is to undo this front part take that off first because of the big spring in there <laughs> then you need to this bit goes on there then you need to undo this pin and undo that before you take anything else off because otherwise the spring's going to rip that plastic bit apart even if it hasn't already it will so it's really important to take this lever off that's got a pin through it so that you don't rip your whole brake system handbrake apart so once you've taken all that off then you can undo that and that went in there and had a really big spring on it like a massive spring um, like that but heaps heaps bigger so yeah that's that's what they are this one's been taken to bits so it looks a little bit different but they're quite a complicated thing for something simple um, yeah so I highly recommend <laughs> what we did I don't have much faith in putting plastic under that amount of pressure especially old plastic I mean this truck was built in 1977 so this bit of plastic has been working as a handbrake for a very long time trouble is all the trucks who have these of that age group are going to be running into the same sort of problems so if you can get a good one of these i reckon yeah whack it in replace yours if you've got a broken one by all means but if you can't find a good one it's probably worth spending the extra and getting something better because you know that one that i've got now should last forever because they're a lot simpler now they don't have all these springs and crazy parts on them so they from what i understand from gary they have a sliding valve which is a lot simpler than all of this so yeah it's been an interesting project i was a little bit stressed at first especially once the brake pressure wouldn't come up which meant essentially the truck couldn't move 
I was immensely grateful that he stayed put and him and his lovely lady stayed put and helped me and got me moving again. I really, really appreciate that. It just shows how wonderful our road community is. Yeah, it's always nice when humanity restores your belief in them a bit more again. You know, we live in a world full of people who will, just wouldn't do something like that. And to have somebody go out of their way to help you, it was just magic. So yeah, essentially that's what's happened. I'll show you the new system. So yeah, he, he bent that and he actually made, made these. I am so impressed because, you know, I had old non-metric, non-modern fittings on the old thing. So he made these adapters because we couldn't actually buy any, even at NZ, at the hose peoples and the hydraulic people in Hamilton, they didn't have any. And I was really impressed because he didn't have proper welding gear with him. <laughs> and he did that with a, you know, a torch, blowtorch thing and on top of his gas stove actually. But, you know, if you had, could get these made, you could get these made. If you had all the bits you needed, you could take them into an engineer's and get them welded together and it wouldn't cost you a lot. So, yeah. So, essentially, it the longest bit was actually figuring out which port on the back of this did what. Which one was in, which one was out. There's a one-way valve in that one. Um, and because it had four ports instead of three, Gary made a bung for that one. So he's blocked that one off. Because that one, which took a while to figure out, and it was actually Harry who came up the hill, who used to be a diesel mechanic. It's wonderful to know all these people who know stuff. He said, yeah, yeah, that other one will be for the trailer brake to, you know, assist that or do something with that. So that makes sense. So with the four port ones, you do have to block one off. But, yeah, once you know, like he said, you know, now that he knows how it all works um, and what's meant to go where, it'd be a lot quicker because he wouldn't be trying to figure out which port did what because you get zero diagrams or descriptions or anything with this. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the back of it. And the handle. is a lot smaller, but it's got the same sort of pull up release I just got to reach back a little bit more which is not a problem but that's the new handle it's a very modern part on a very old truck and he because we didn't have any good steel he just used the backing plate he used the backing plate off the other one cut it off and mounted that to it and I can tidy that up a bit at some point if I really want to it's not going to get water in there because it's under there so I'm not too worried but I have a handbrake again, so yeah. So yeah, I wanted to film a bit. I wanted to make a um, video about this because I reckon, you know, Lance Cryer said it's um, something they constantly trying to find. They're having trouble finding them. It's a pain, it's a nuisance. Um, I went on Facebook and a few other people said yeah they had more modern ones fitted um, so that's definitely an option and I think it's a very good option because yeah I'm just not impressed with how the original was built. Why would you, if they'd made this out of aluminium in the first place it would never break, it would last forever. So <laughs> you put a huge spring in something Put it under huge load and make it out of plastic. No idea why they would do that. But anyway, I wanted to share that experience in case anybody else runs into these sort of issues. And, you know, that there are solutions, there are ways of doing it without going crazy trying to find a good one, which seems to be very, very hard. I had one guy, he kindly offered to send me one, but it leaked. It had leaking seals. Um, so yeah, I told them not to not to worry about it, but yeah, they could definitely be fixed quite easily if you could get these. But 
getting those is not easy. I hunted on the net a lot, trying to find some, even in Australia, UK, wherever. I looked, I hunted and couldn't find them. So, yeah, so that's been this weekend's mission. <laughs> okay, let's... Yeah, so it's been an unexpected adventure. <laughs> it was a little bit stressful at first because I was like, oh no, I can't find one. How am I going to get this sorted? And you know, human angels exist because I'd posted on Facebook and various groups about you know having this problem and where could I find one. And I got a message that... Buster McBus was out in the domain and they wanted to come and have a look. I had no idea that Gary knew what he was doing with hydraulics so I was like okay come and have a look and then he told me and said I want to pull it apart and have a look what's inside and I went okay. So we went from there but it was magical. <laughs> you know there wasn't a better person who could have been here at that time. You know, magic does happen, good things happen, there are good people out there. And every time something like this happens, not that I want more of it, not that I want more things like this happening necessarily, but every time it happens and somebody helps, there's a warm fuzziness, there's something nice you feel where you go, oh wow, yeah, there are nice people around, you know, there are helpful people around. And those are the things to always remember. Like they're the things I file away as something important that I remember forever. Like right along my journey with this old girl and we've had a long time together. Actually next year we'll be 20 years together, me and this old truck. <laughs> um, but every time somebody's helped me, it's just I remember those moments, those times, that kindness, that help, that it's just been awesome, you know, when my deck broke off and people helping me and Alan bringing the tractor down and helping lift it and, you know, without that I couldn't have lifted that blasted thing back up there to reattach it. Um, when I broke down after the Woodville thing and had a fuel leak, I had nothing to fix it with and Wayne came and helped and patched it up so I could go to a mechanics, you know, I just didn't have anything to patch it up with. Um, luckily he had some need it, so that worked. <laughs> Briefly, short time, you know, it wasn't a long term solution, but it got me going and it was wonderful. And the people here, you know, Harry and Lorraine who, who stay here a lot, you know, I've borrowed tools and knowledge, I've picked his brain, I've, yeah, priceless. You know, it's people that make this world a beautiful place. So, I don't know, my takeaway from this experience once again is cherish those memories that make you smile. Forget about the rest. Forget about the bad stuff. Learn from it. Move on. But the memories that make you smile, that make you feel grateful, that make you feel really, really good, file them away. They're important. And they keep your outlook and your feeling about humanity, about life, about where we're at really really positive so yeah but if this video helped you in any way <laughs> please give it a thumbs up it was an unexpected subject but that's what happens on the road we have unexpected moments things just happen um, and also good news come and say hi come on come and say hi Come on, come and say hi. Look, look, there's the camera, yeah. I don't know if you can see her actually, she might be a bit low. But Miss Feeney's feeling quite a lot better too. I've given her some natural remedies and cleaned up her diet and when she feels a bit better, I want to, you know, when she feels really good again, we'll look at getting her teeth cleaned, they still need doing. But the irritation in her mouth has gone down a lot. She's eating a lot better, but yeah, basically I think the biggest effect has been just cleaning up her diet. 
She's a carnivore. She's not designed to eat grains and junky cat food. <laughs> That's full of stuff that cats wouldn't normally eat. So I've done a lot of research, so it's very balanced her diet. I make sure she gets all the nutrients she needs. And she's getting used to it. She'd still rather have her junk food, I think, as I call it. But she's feeling better for it. She's feeling good. She's happy again. She's playing again. And that's not bad for a 13-year-old cat. So, yeah, grateful for that too today. But it's a gorgeous day. I'm going to just enjoy today, I think. I'm uploading a video on my other channel, so that's going to take a while. So I'll just hang around. Might fly my drone a bit today or something. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, this random mechanical information video, or just any of it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and lots and lots of love to you. Travel well and take care and see you next time.